Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, running through as many spring games as we can possibly get to. Of course, uh, this past weekend was flooded with Power 5 teams on the field for the final time during the spring session, and we will have much of the same coming up next weekend, this April 13th to April 20th swing. It's just power-packed with Power 5 teams uh, lining it up for the annual spring game, and certainly we cannot forget about the Alabama Crimson Tide. we got uh, Stephen M. Smith on the line from Touchdown Alabama to break it down for us. Stephen, how are you doing this afternoon? Doing well, Mark. On uh, Saturday, it was the Crimson Tide spring game, and despite the little mist going back and forth inside Brian Denny, and probably a little bit of a smaller crowd than what Nick Saban is used to, there were some good things on the field you know, in terms of the players, both offensively, defensively, and even special teams shocked a couple of people. Okay, what happened on the special teams that liked uh, that that uh, really flashed? Well, a field goal was made. <laughs> okay. A field, goal, a, a field goal of 43 yards was made by the freshman Will Riker, three-star, for the 2019 class of Hoover, Alabama, the young man that was the number one kicking and potting prospect, according, according to the Coles kicking camp. He was also the number one overall kicking prospect according to ESPN and the two and the twenty four seven sports composite ranking. He went out there, made a field goal from forty three yards from Team White, made all four of his extra points. How about the young man can punt also? In the punting aspect, he averaged forty two point two yards per punt, had a long of forty seven yards, so Will Riker showing he can do a little bit of everything on, on the kicking front. Stephen M. Smith joining us from Touchdown Alabama, reviewing uh, the Tide's performance uh, versus the Tide in Tuscaloosa on Saturday. Uh, how about this uh, backup quarterback situation? What did you see out of those guys? Matt Jones did a fantastic job in, in the scrimmage. I know you had an interception early on to Shane Lee, uh, the freshman inside linebacker, did a great job reading Jones' with eyes, thinking back in the coverage. Just making a big time play, but one of the things that I saw from Max Jones on the weekend, the old, the old, the, uh, the younger him or him in the past, after making a mistake and getting scolded or chewed out by Nick Saban, he would crawl into a hole, he would get down on himself, and more mistakes would ensue after that. But on Saturday, something different happened. He threw the pick to Shane Lee. Uh, Nick Saban gave him a look, kind of chewed him out a little bit, but he bounced back beautifully. We're talking two touchdown drives, including one that ended up on a 29-yard score from Jones to redshirt freshman receiver Xavier Williams to give Team White a 17-10 to 10 lead over Team Crimson to start the third quarter. Matt Jones overall was uh, 19 for 23 passing for 271 yards. Two touchdowns, one interception. After that pick, really looked to think, calm down, and maneuvered this offense to the surprise of a lot of our high fans inside the building. All right, talking college football with Stephen M. Smith from Touchdown Alabama, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, where it's our aim to provide you the best in discussion, debate, and analysis. I'm always looking for those. Uh, those next wave of players who will be impact players at this level, whether it's a guy that redshirted last year, a guy that was just playing special teams, a guy that got a spot start or two that could be an impact player, roughly an all-conference player, somebody who's going to be counted upon this year. Both sides of the ball, Stephen, as you scan the field, who are those guys that uh, you really like what they accomplished this spring and maybe showed up uh, at the uh, A-Day game with? Well, no, well I'm going to talk the defensive side of the ball first, Mark. I'm going to go to the secondary. Josh Joe. Uh, Josh Joe, the corner at 6'1", 186 pounds, and entering his sophomore year out of Miami, Florida. Played his high school ball, his prep school ball, during his senior year in Connecticut. He's got length, he's got ball skills, he's got size, he's tough, and he's got the aggression to frustrate wide receivers. This was somebody on Saturday that really disrupted the timing between Tua Tagovailoa and the group of receivers, Devonta Smith, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, whomever was lined up on Josh Joe had a difficult time separating their body from his. He did not allow a free release off the line of scrimmage. 
The young man was in the phase, in the in the space, just in the grill of these wideouts. Forced three pass breakups to go along with four tackles. Really impressed with Joe. He had a tremendous spring and really played well in the spring game. Offensively, this young man may not have a lot to do this upcoming year, but the 2020 season will be his breakout month of a time. And that's going to be true freshman wide receiver John Necce. If Calvin Ridley had a long lost twin, had a long lost brother, had a long lost cousin from Canada, John Necce is that guy. Both guys the same body structure. When Calvin Ridley played at Alabama, he was six feet, 190 pounds. John Necce, six feet, 195 pounds. When Calvin Ridley was at Alabama, he was the one offensively that wore number three. Uh, in 2018, nobody wore that number offensively. To start the spring of 2019, John Netschi pops up wearing number three. And in terms of just the hands, the route running, the uh, capabilities on the field, both guys very much so mirror each other. Netschi in the spring game, five catches, 135 yards, was the Dixie Howell Memorial Player of the Game he had one catch on Saturday, Mark, where Mac Jones slightly underthrew his ball in double coverage. John Metchie, the ability to stop, recognize where he is in relation to the football, turn, adjust, contort, and bring the ball in in double coverage. Looked a lot like what Calvin Ridley did during his time with Alabama from 2015 through 17. So, Though I don't see Mechie doing a lot this season because of the fact that you have Judy, Ruggs, Waddle, and Smith ahead of him, that spring game, the young man from Canada, he put on a show. All right. I'm going to mark down the name, keep him tucked away in my notes for 2020. And uh, you have proven to be a prophet many times, Stephen M. Smith. So uh, we will see if that holds true once again. Uh, anybody else out there that uh, we can anticipate possibly being a factor who hasn't been in the past? Another guy, another guy I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at Josh McMillan here. Joshua McMillan on defense at linebacker at 6'3", 237 pounds, redshirt senior, came in at 2015 class, a guy that's kind of the old man on the team along with Billy Moses. McMillan hasn't really had a lot of playing time in his career. He's got 19 tackles through the four seasons he's been here, including 14 a season ago. Kind of your plug-and-play guy. But I feel like this season coming up, he's earned the trust of the coaching staff. He's earned the trust of the players. He, he will more than likely get the first crack at weak side linebacker right next to Dylan Moses. Uh, Josh McMillan had six tackles in the spring game, including one for loss. Filled the holes really well. I can mention, he's got the size, he's got the technique, he's got the uh, the strength at the point of attack. The main thing for him is being able to knife his way into the backfield consistently and, and, and stump the run and, and play the passing lane sideline to sideline. That will be the biggest question, the biggest ordeal for Josh McMillan. The youth at weak side linebacker is, is promising because Shane Lee, a freshman, true freshman, and Jalen Moody, was going into his sophomore year. Both guys recorded one interception apiece on Saturday. Uh, Jalen Moody returned his for a 30-yard touchdown, picking off the freshman quarterback in Paul Tyson. Of course, Shane Lee led Team Crimson with a tackle. So the youth of that spot, very, very promising. But right now, Josh McMillan, somebody that plug-and-play guy, but a guy that knows the system backwards, forwards, and sideways, He's a guy on defense I really want to see. I have a good year during the fall. Stephen, we had major issues here at the Mark Rogers TV Voice of College Football Command Center on Saturday. We had cable signal issues. We had to switch out a box. Uh, I was all lined up to watch Ohio State, Notre Dame, Nebraska, Alabama, Auburn, on down the line. Penn State, Minnesota had games on DVR, Mississippi State, Missouri, all sorts of games on DVR ready to roll, and uh, we, we had our issues. So 
not that we don't rely on you on a regular basis, but especially since I was not able to take in the uh, the Tide Spring game. I, 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 I can't believe it, Mark. <laughs> you you are the last person, Mark, that I would want to see technical difficulties happen to on the home front. Well, yes, we yes we did. It, it was a bit of a crisis here for the uh, again command center, but I believe we're up and running again and hoping to catch as many uh, replays online as we can possibly find. Uh, Stephen M. Smith, touchdown Alabama. I encourage everybody who loves Alabama football, and even if you don't love Alabama football, if you're a college football fan that uh, you pride yourself in keeping track of the major programs, well, at the top of the list would be, of course, Alabama. So check out the work there. It's pretty phenomenal in what they're able to crank out on a daily basis on Alabama sports across the board and, of course, football front and center. Stephen, we appreciate you stopping by. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. No problem, Mark. Thank you. I'm having fun.